when we release perfectionism, vulnerability has to come in as a superpower to help us experience what could be limitless potential for us. There is a direct correlation between the illusion of perfection and the unwillingness to be vulnerable. If you're vulnerable, it immediately disarms anything that's happening with someone else. Being vulnerable with yourself, that has limitless potential. Can I be vulnerable enough to let somebody think that I'm stupid because I don't know one thing? The wall of vulnerability that you create is a transparent and open wall. It's almost like a force field. Hi, I'm Amber Mikesell, founder of Suivera, host of the Heart Leader podcast, and author of this amazing book, Silent Your Inner Critic. And I'm excited to share that this awesome little guide is now available for pre order. You can head on over to silenceyourinnercritic.com and pre order your copy now. Or you can pop on over to wherever you enjoy ordering books like Barnes and Noble and just type in the title, Silence Your Inner Critic, and find your copy there. As soon as you place your pre-order, send us a copy, a digital screenshot, or just a notification showing us your receipt and email that over to info, I-N-F-O, at suivera.org and brace yourself for a lot of amazing gifts from me over the course of the next few weeks as you wait for your copy to arrive in the mail. I can't wait to start this epic journey with you. In the past couple podcasts, we've been talking about perfectionism and how perfectionism can limit our infinite potential, right? Because it becomes stagnation. And then that led into talking about heart storming and how getting into our hearts can actually expand the infinite potential, but that requires vulnerability in many ways. So that's what I want to talk about in today's podcast is vulnerability. We have it written into Silent Your Inner Critic as a superpower, but it's a really hard thing to embrace. But to us, it's really a natural progression when we release perfectionism and we embrace an opportunity for heart storming and having that coherence with another group of people vulnerability has to come in as a superpower to move into that and to really create those bonds in a relationship to help us experience what could be limitless potential for us. How have you started to embrace your own vulnerability? Because that's as a guide, that is a path that you've walked where you were very walled off in some ways when, at least when I met you, and that was what you were seeking to tear walls down from, mm-hmm. is, all right, I, I know I have walls, but I don't know how to start knocking those bricks down. So can you talk about vulnerability and why you were seeking that and maybe some of what you did? Absolutely. Uh, well, first and foremost, I think for me, the there is a direct correlation between the illusion of perfection and the unwillingness to be vulnerable. Okay. How? Yeah. So th- the less I was willing to be vulnerable, the more that I, I, I created this idea of perfection for myself of like what I wanted to attain. Uh, and because it was, I was so stuck in that I wasn't allowing to be myself, to be myself, to be who I am. So the moment I started releasing and letting go of the idea of, of perfection and looking more into process rather than perfection, which is kind of what we were talking about on a previous podcast, um, 
and allowing vulnerability to really be the super skill, as you're saying, instead of this perfection being a super skill. Um, the walls dropped, the illusion dropped, and the authenticity came forward because the the illusion was only there to protect my lack of vulnerability in my ego. That's interesting. And if somebody hasn't watched the previous podcast where you're we're talking about perfection and process. Do you mean process like what you would find in a business where there's a process flow? Mm. And so you're just following the process of your life or do you mean something different? Yeah, good, good clarification. Uh, for me, I mean actual like, uh, so the process of living, <laughs> just, just process in general. Uh, perfection inherently means a result. And so if we're so focused on the result, then we're going to constantly be let down and expect, and that creates expectation. And then that creates, um, the concept, like uh, the idea of, of failure overtaking, at least for me, that's all, I can only speak from my experience. I have had observations and I see many others struggle with this, whether they feel that or not, that's a different thing. Um, but it is insidious how much perfectionism or the idea of what I felt I should be instead of the allowance and acceptance of who I am through vulnerability. You know, one is a facade of a wall and the other is a wall made of concrete and the, or the strongest, uh, material you can never break down. Yeah. And the, the wall of vulnerability that you create is almost is a transparent and open wall. It's almost like a force field. This may be a better way to put it because we're <laughs> nerds and sci-fi and all that. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's like a, like a force field in some way where the other is, a, is this facade of, of a wall. And so I guess long story short, um, as I wrap, pull back in and, and, and weave this together. <laughs> do the weave. Do the weave, right? <laughs> um, is if you're so focused on the result, you, you lose the process. But if you're focused on the process, the results come naturally. Yeah. And they can even be far greater results than you can imagine. And what I'm hearing for, from you, if I'm hearing you correctly, and that's why I want to ask, is it's not as much even a process as it is just embracing life as it unfolds, almost more like a journey, and then gaining insights from that. So the process is more allowance than anything that you're necessarily doing where allowing in and of itself is a doing and probably the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it's committing to allowing life to be life and navigating that journey, knowing that there's no perfect outcome. There's just the, the things that are unfolding and how you respond to them and what you gain from them all along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was doing my best not to be cliche, like, oh, it's all the journey, you know. It's not the <laughs> it's destination, not the nation, it's, it's the journey. journey. Right? And I didn't <laughs> want to like get into that cliche. I, I just, I, I mean, there's a reason why those cliches exist because there is a truth to it. But sometimes we can be so disenfranchised with the cliche that we just don't even take it seriously. Yeah, we're not so. attempting to be a greeting card. Yeah. But at the same time, there's there's a lot of truth in that. Yeah. Because if we're so quick to get to a goal, then we block off the opportunity to make connections along the way, which is the whole point of vulnerability, right? And to get to that vulnerable space where those walls, those titanium walls that you're talking about are Amazing. not there. Yeah. 
<laughs> when we're talking about the shields, yes. right? Um, we don't want to have such a guard up that we can't experience life and connection with others because we're so like guarded to get to a goal at all costs. Because speaking from my own experience, that goal is rarely as amazing as our perception of the goal would lead us to believe that it is. And so now we have guarded ourselves. We have missed out on vulnerable, authentic connections all along the way, which likely would have been better than the end goal all along the path. We get to the end goal and we're like, well, this isn't what I thought. And we look back in our wake and we're like, wow, but connecting more deeply with that person would have been amazing. And then we want to circle back and go back to that person. And they're like, sorry, I've moved on. You know, I couldn't just sit here and wait. So the wise person in us would learn from that and say, okay, now I'm going to shift my behavior because I've learned I can't go back and redo. There's no rewind. So, but there is a learning and a moving forward from here. And so I'm going to begin to let go of perfectionist tendencies and goal-focused mindset where the only thing that matters is the end goal. And I'm going to start doing what you're talking about, which is embracing and engaging in life as it is, where it is, as I'm moving toward whatever that line in the sand is and having those vulnerable, authentic connections all along the way. Yeah. I mean, that's a good, that's a beautiful way to put it. It's, I think, I feel like it's really important to view, to view life as that process. It's, you know, if we are viewing life as a result, then the only real result is the end result. And so then we're no longer in life in this form, if we will, for however many different beliefs there are around that process. And so to me, that means that there, that life is always unfolding. And so, and I know we talked about the difference between results and goals in, in, in one of the previous podcasts, and, and that's important context in here, but not enough to, to, to go back into it again. Um, you can watch that one yeah. in the future. Exactly. Uh, awesome. But when it comes to vulnerability, it is, to me, it's in alignment with life in so many ways because vulnerability in itself is a process. It's an unfolding, it's uh, uh, unpacking in a lot of ways of, and rediscovering, which is to me very exciting. It's, it's such a beautiful connection, as you're saying. It's, it's through, because it's, it's a connection, it's a deeper level of connection to self. Because, and the reason why that's important is because we can only be so, we can only be as connected to someone else as we are to ourselves. And I know that was something when we first met, uh, you know, there was a, a connection and a feeling, but it also felt so far away. And that was because, at least for me, it was because I felt so far away from myself. The more that I opened up to myself and allowed and loved myself, uh, you know, through all the flaws, through all the experiences and let go of this idea of perfection, knock down this uh, facade of a wall and started building this transparent force field of vulnerability that, that got closer and connected to myself. Then that opened the door for us to reach greater levels of uh, connection and depth. Yes. And as a superpower, it's amazing how the moment you reflect that superpower within yourself, if you're vulnerable, it immediately disarms anything that's happening with someone else. It's really challenging if 
someone is upset with you and is kind of coming at you saying, you did this and you did this and you did this, and you are vulnerable enough to say, I know that I messed up and I'm not perfect. Perfectionist would not say I'm not perfect. (laughs) So to be able to say I'm not perfect and I messed up in this situation, I am actively seeking to grow And this is what I'm doing in order to do that. But this is what I'm taking away from this situation. Can you help me understand more as I'm growing? This is what I've experienced. This is what I experienced in this situation. Can you help me? Very rarely would somebody continue. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some people who are just out to attack. Mm -hmm. It happens. But not very many. So most people would take that vulnerability and go, wow, okay, yes, let me help you grow and then be inspired to potentially do the same thing going forward to go, wow, I just saw someone strong enough to step up and say that they recognized they had room for growth. How can I do the same thing? And get inspired by that, especially in close connected relationships. We do it to each other all the time. And I've noticed in my own family that the moment I started taking personal responsibility and was vulnerable and transparent in the areas that I was finding I needed to grow and then not holding what I was noticing my family was placing on me in areas where they had an opportunity to grow, not pointing it out to them, not saying you need to grow here because that doesn't really help either, right? But not holding it either. So if someone would come at me in my direct family circle and say, well, you didn't do this right, but I had done something from my perspective correctly, not apologizing for it and simply saying, thank you for your perspective and letting it be that. Not pointing something out to them that, well, you didn't give me all the information or, well, there was this or this. I didn't need to prove myself. I could simply say, Thank you for the information or thank you for your perspective and move on and not hold their room for growth on that unless they asked me for it. But the more they would see me owning my part, they then would start to come forward and say, hey, what can I do differently here? What do, what have you noticed about me in this situation and it created vulnerability from both sides then does that make sense yeah it makes a lot of sense mainly because to me perfectionism is a very solo journey simply because like we've talked about perfection what is perfect is so relative it's so singular no two ideas of perfection are the same yeah but to me vulnerability even though it can experience individually, it's still a collaboration. It's still a collective experience. Uh, and that to me is really an expression of what you're, what you're saying. It, it, it's an invitation in. It's not very, I, I mean, I know a lot of people are, say they're moved by perfection. And that's, I, I, I get the idea. Mm-hmm. But I would, I would offer, if, if you really break it down, is someone really moved by perfection? Is someone really moved by stagnation? Is someone really moved by no longer, no, long, no more evolution? You know, I don't know. I don't think I, I can't answer that. For me, I definitely can't say no to that. I, I can't agree with that. Like, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right now. I've, I've confused myself you in that don't process. Agree I with don't that. agree. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Like it's for, you. Uh, for me, it's just it's 
I can't even say move and perfection in the same, it, those feel uh, opposite to me. But what in this world is perfect? Right. I, I have yet to encounter something in this world that I would consider perfect. Right. So I don't, I, to that individual, it appears perfect in that moment. And that's a beautiful gift. Like I can understand how that would be a beautiful gift to feel as though you are experiencing something that is perfect for you in that moment. That's serendipitous. You hold that moment in awe and cherish it, but that doesn't make the object perfect. That makes the moment perfect, Mm. which I feel is very different. Yes. Because it's an alignment of all things coming together in a way that feels serendipitous and in alignment for you. Yeah. And so, but that object is going to change. You're going to change. That moment will never be the same again. And so you've had that one moment that felt perfect for you. Yeah. And that's, that's such a beautiful way to present it. Um, I feel like that's like a, it's in many ways a, a redefining perfection from a result into a process because I could see that the continuation of constantly getting better is a, is a, uh, to me, that is a, that, that is perfect. If I were to say, what is a pro like that's process, right? That's growth. That's expansion. If there was a perfect, it would be the opportunity for there to be more and better and growth. And um, I don't, I don't want to keep. Uh, I apologize. I don't want to keep flowing into the perfection aspect. But um, the reason why I wanted to, in terms of the, the uh, as you're talking about the object side of it, is that we uh, and and I specifically placed the result on myself. And that I had to attain this certain level and be this certain way and do these certain things to, to be viewed in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize the restraints I was placing, the limitations I was placing on myself through that process. And ultimately l- limiting my capacity to not only connect with others, but myself through that process as well. And so... It was so result oriented that I missed so many things. I missed so many connections. I missed so much that was happening around me because I was so focused on what I wanted the end result to be that it couldn't be any other way. And life was gifting me with so much potential around me. And I kept saying, no, 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 because I only want it this way. And then I never got this way. It was, again, it was an illusion. It wasn't a reality. It was something that set me up for an expectation, which then set me up for disappointment, which then set me up for failure. And it was all the things that I didn't actually desire to experience. And it wasn't until I embraced vulnerability and transparency and openness and connection because that's not, you know, the the other way that I'm talking about is a one-way street, but this way is a collaboration. And through that process, I was able to expand my exp- the love in the relationship with myself and then those around me and you as my fiance. And now life is even grander than I could have ever imagined. I, there's no way I could have envisioned where, where I'm at right now in my life. No way. No chance. And based on where I was going, it was not not great. Yeah. And I think that's the key part for me when it comes to vulnerability is when I'm willing to be vulnerable enough to say, I don't know. Mm. Right. That's a very vulnerable space to be in because we are so conditioned to be in control or direction of our lives, of our knowledge, of our direction. 
in what we're creating in the world, right? So to say, I don't know, is a very vulnerable and scary thing. But it's also the most freeing thing in the world. And sometimes the best answer and the best place you can be, because then we're back to that that space that we were talking about in our last podcast, which is the space of infinite potential, right? Mm -hmm. When you don't know, that means your brain is done thinking that it has all the answers. And you can get back to the space of understanding that you don't need to know. You need to experience. And experiencing comes from that heart connection with the flow of life. And when you need to know, you'll know. And until you need to know, experience and engage and be vulnerable enough to know that you don't need to know right now. And that connects you back to the experience. Because if you think you need to know what you're going to be doing 10 years from now, then you're stressing yourself out because you don't even know where you'll be 10 years from now. You can set a goal and then let it go Mm -hmm. because who knows? And I've myself been there like thinking, Oh, I'm going to live in this place in 10 years and I'll be doing this job in 10 years. But this place and this job didn't align with me 10 years from then. Because I wasn't the same person that I was when I set that goal in that location. And so I didn't know that. So I didn't need to know. Let go of the need and be vulnerable, if that makes sense. It absolutely does. And I feel like it aligns with the need to know. It has a relationship with perfection. Right. It's a fear that if I don't know this, is someone going to think I'm stupid or is someone else going to think, you know, I'm not prepared or is someone else not going to respect me? And so this goes back to this illusion of, of perfection and in a disconnect from who we truly are. When you do hear someone say, I don't know, as you said, I think that's a beautiful thing. That's a wonderful thing. That means that they're most likely very connected to who they are because they understand by saying that doesn't make them any less. Mm-hmm. As you said, it actually provides an opportunity for more. Yes. And that's, as you say, experience. And I love that experience can help create uh, knowledge. And I, I feel like experience is another word for awareness. Yes. And you always, this is one of my favorite things in the world you've always said, is that we're, our knowledge is limited by our awareness. And so the more that we can expand our awareness, the more we can gain knowledge. And so experience is, is, uh, is an actionable step of, an, of awareness. And so through that experience, we can gain more knowledge and then we can express. But perfectionism, again, is, is this limit. Yeah. And it keeps us in a box. But vulnerability keeps us open. It keeps us expansive. And none of us know all the answers. And so why why I ever spent so much time and energy and stress around the fact that I didn't know something, as if I was the only person in the world who didn't know something. Yeah. Is still to this day just mind-blowing. Like why, why did I put myself through that? And there's a fear. Like, I honestly understand it because there are others who will belittle you for not knowing. Mm -hmm. But that's their ego, right? That's not yours. It doesn't have to be yours. You can choose to let it be your problem, but it doesn't have to be. Right. Right? And the irony is they don't know things either. (laughs) So where is it coming? It's It's an unfounded belittlement. Yes. And again, that goes back to vulnerability. Can I be vulnerable enough to let somebody think that I'm stupid because I don't know one thing? Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you, I know a lot of stuff that they don't know. Mm -hmm. They just happen to ask one question in one area where I don't know. But I would love to learn from them if they know. Mm -hmm. So by saying I don't know, maybe they can enlighten me. 
maybe they can teach me. And I can be transparent enough to say, I don't know, instead of just BSing my way through and pretending like I know something that I don't know. That only serves my ego. And I don't want to feed that thing. Like, right? I want to use it as the tool that it is when I need it, but I don't want to feed it arbitrarily. I want to utilize it. And so I'm so grateful when someone has knowledge that I have yet to acquire, but I have to be willing to say that I don't know. And I love it when people are brave enough and strong enough to say when they don't know something. That's a very vulnerable act. And it is very much, as we say, the antithesis of perfectionism, right? And it builds stronger relationships because I now know you trust me enough to tell me that you don't know something. And I trust you enough to tell you I don't know something. And then we learn together, right? I agree. I agree. And... I feel like it's important for us to touch on the aspect of when we say vulnerability is a two way street, it doesn't mean that everyone's willing to collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's important to state because I don't want to talk in absolutes uh, as best as possible. And there have been times where I've opened up in vulnerability and didn't receive the same type of vulnerability in return. And I know you have too. Uh, and there's different levels of that. And sometimes that vulnerability would actually be shunned or pushed away or, you know, and, like someone and yeah, uncomfortable, like right? someone uncomfortable. So, um, I want to make sure it's important to express that and, and that this isn't just a, a one size fits all like, Oh, just be vulnerable and share everything. And it's, that's not what this conversation is about. This is about uncovering and starting first and foremost with being vulnerable with yourself. Mm -hmm that has limitless potential and you don't have to worry about someone making you feel dumb because it's only you, mm -hmm. you know, or making you feel any certain way other than yourself. You are in direction of yourself to talk about personal responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. That is, it is an activation of personal responsibility by being vulnerable to yourself, taking accountability, opening up and understanding that there is room for growth. This is an incredible, incredible aspect of that feels beyond empowering. From there, then you can seek to actively choose who you desire to be vulnerable with because now your capacity to create depth of connection with others has expanded. It has shifted. You now can feel empowered through collaboration in your direction, which is, uh, which is wonderful. And be okay that someone else isn't because you probably weren't at some point either. So just as you hopefully are giving grace to yourself through this process of being vulnerable, give grace to others as they may not be ready for their own vulnerability. And it's not a reflection on you. If you desire to be vulnerable with someone and they don't meet it, it's not a reflection on you. Not always. <laughs> Again, not as, not, don't do my best. Absolutes. There's no absolutes here. I'm doing my best to just express in a way that we can, there's always outliers. There's always, you know, but we have to have enough conversation to, to move the needle. Yes. Right. And so most of the time it's not you, it's not you, it's someone else is not ready and that's okay. It's beautiful where they are at and they, it's not our job to force that type of vulnerability onto someone else if they're not ready. It's not our job to, to determine whether they are ready or not. It is our responsibility to say, well, if they're not ready, is this who I desire to really build a relationship with? Whether that's romantically, whether that's in business, whether that's a friendship, you know, that's, that's open to internal or external discussion. Right. It's choice. And there's still a lot to be learned if, if someone is not open to that level of vulnerability, does that mean you write them off? Heck no. Because you still learn a lot about yourself. How do I show up in this situation? Because in all honesty, most people aren't ready for deep vulnerability, especially if it's in the office, right? We don't generally go into a corporate environment or a business environment 
and dive deep into vulnerability. And But there are some people who desire to do that. And it doesn't make anybody wrong in that situation. But the person who desires to be deeply vulnerable and come in and talk about their sick cat and what's going on in their home life, and then you have the person who's like, no, my home life is private. I don't really want to talk about my home life in the business world. Neither one of those people are right or wrong. They're just choosing different things. But how can they learn from each other at the level of vulnerability where they are, right? And still be good together in the workplace, moving toward the same common objective. They can learn from each other's level of vulnerability if they let go of the need to create little mini versions of how they experience vulnerability. Yes, that's so, so well said because, yeah, if we're putting vulnerability in a box, that's not helpful either. Right. Right. And so... Maybe someone at work is not willing to be vulnerable in their personal life, but they are being, they are willing to be vulnerable and saying, Hey, I don't know, or I don't feel ready for this, or, uh, Hey, I'm, I'm not happy in the role that I'm in. And I feel like I'm, I would be better suited in this area. Or uh, to me, it's even vulnerable to say, Hey, I feel like I've been working so hard and I'm ready for a raise or I'm ready for a promotion or I'm ready for the next level. There is a sense of, of, of deep strength in, in any of those types of vulnerabilities. And so, yeah, I think, I think you're right. If we peg someone as, as in a certain way or judge someone just because they're not willing to be vulnerable in the same way that we are potentially because that works for us but it doesn't work for them, we have to expand our awareness of vulnerability to, to allow for a depth of connection through breadth of connection. Yes. And that is stages of your superpower, right? And that's why I do call it a superpower because for those of us who really love these comic books or superhero movies or any of those things, superheroes do have superpowers that develop and get stronger and more expansive over time. Like Spider-Man and his ability to web sling, right? He started out one way, and now if you look at Tony Stark got involved and he's got all of these ways of web slinging and he's got laser webs, you know, it like goes all over the place. It is the same thing. We have superpowers inside of us that once we start them, they begin to expand and our awareness of how to use them expands. They grow stronger. We, go, we grow more aware of how to utilize them in what circumstances. You know, we don't just go slinging vulnerability all over everyone all of the time. Not every situation calls for the sling of vulnerability. So we start to hone our awareness of our superpowers, how much to apply and when to apply it. Yeah, I love right? that. As you're sharing that, it's just, it kind of dawned on me because that was such a great explanation in terms of the understanding as a whole. And it kind of reminds me of just how the mis misunderstanding of unity versus uniformity and this is even in our ideologies, right? As we're talking about perfection to some way, that's almost a call to uniformity that it needs that everyone needs to fit in this one box of what perfection looks like, even though it is a very, you know, we've talked about how it's an illusion and very relative. It still seems to want to move people into one area, one specific way. But unity is not about uniformity. Unity is about, uh, as you're talking about, this, this, uh, intention and purpose and being unified in like being unified in that understanding. And so I, that to me is so powerful in the way that that's expressed. So, so when we are focusing on vulnerability, you, the idea, like the, the misinterpretation of, of uniformity would be that my vulnerability needs to be exactly like yours or yours need to be exactly like mine. But the unity of, of vulnerability, which is true connection, is saying that I'm seeking to create a connection with you regardless of how you express your vulnerability. Yes. 
great explanation. I love that. I think that's a great place to wrap this up from a vulnerable space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And if you're looking to level up your vulnerability superpowers, a lot of this is in the book that will be hitting shelves on March 4th, 2025, called Silence Your Inner Critic. You can also explore the library right here on the Heart Leader podcast. We have so many wonderful episodes that dive deep into the superpower of vulnerability. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. 